ready? It's the round table with me, Robert Bannon. Listen, I have often been told about shows I have heard. A lot of publicists, especially publicists in New York City that deal with theater, they always tell you about the next show. I have never been personally told this is the show you need to see everybody. And he, Tom is here. Tom, welcome to the round table. Thank you, Robert. I'm so happy and honored to be here. I, tw 20 seconds is going to play the beautiful Irene Diamond stage. It's gorgeous right there on 42nd Street. It is going to start. How the heck did you get here? How did this all happen? So, you know, the story is about my childhood. So I would say that that is how I got here. But, um, you know, the last 15 years of my life, almost 20, I've been a music therapist. I am a music therapist uh, and uh, graduated from music theater school like a lot of other people 30 years ago. And um, after my dad passed away uh, 12 years ago, I knew I knew that I wanted to write about our story. And having my father have deep mental health issues and my mom passed away when I was a child. This is a story that I've talked to friends about and I am very blessed to know that I have something inside of me that had some very strong resilience. And um, seven years ago, I started the script and then I just put it out there. And I, the first reading, Robert, was really, I don't want to scare anybody because now it's down to 90 minutes, but the first reading was like two hours long. So it's like I, I wanted to see what could I give the world that would... I don't know. I think we're in such a, a time of we need healing so badly. So I thought, why not use my own story? And how has it been? I, you know, I, I don't I've never written. I sing. I do some, you know, I, I, and I know music has saved my life for sure. What is it like to share these stories, these personal stories, the good, the bad, the funny? I read about the I'm a good Italian boy from Jersey. I read and about the meatballs. I read I read. What is it like to go back every single night for 90 minutes? live through these moments and, and in front of an audience of, of strangers. Well, yeah. So it's been, let me just turn this off. It looks like, there we go. Um, it's been a revelation to me, honestly, uh, because when I started doing this uh, three years ago was my first time that I had a group of people that I did not know in front of me. What started to happen, Robert, was as soon as the show was done, there was this silence. I don't want to give too much of the show away. Uh, you know, that was four years ago because it was right before COVID. And as soon as the show was over, all of these people would just start hugging the person next to them. And then somebody, I just, I just bowed. I did my normal bow. And then somebody would raise their hand and like it was a talk show. I mean, you just watched a 90 minute show and somebody would raise their hand and say, my mother had schizophrenia. My father attempted suicide like yours. And it became this platform. So I, at that point, knew that this was more than just a production. So it was, um, it was revealing to me. And it was also sort of, a re I feel responsible. I feel like I have a story here that could be helpful to some people. I am in awe because I, I think the best art is obviously art that comes from the truth. And I, I am somebody who likes to tell stories on stages as well. And sometimes it's really scary or we get in our heads or it's very vulnerable to share right. some of our deepest, darkest, good and bad moments. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, music, you talk in the press release at least, music has been a guiding force in your life. When did you realize the power of and healing factors of music? So it's, that's a great question because that's the centerpiece of our show is my show, um, our show. <laughs> I play so many characters. I don't know if I'm, I'm a me, my, or we. Uh, so when I was eight years old, I, uh, things were so horrible in my house that I crossed the street of this uh, little town I lived in and there was a church. And it was that Sunday school teacher in that moment that and this is not a made up part. There's tiny little bits of, you know, uh, fiction that I had to just create to like make things a little bit more expansive. This is not expansive. I literally was in my pajamas, crossed the street, and she opened the doors as if she knew I was going to be there. And she said, we've been waiting for you. And that was it. 
she showed me a piano. She taught me how to play the piano. I didn't miss a Sunday for years. And then Robert, thank God I had great teachers. I had great music teachers, great drama teachers that saved my life. Um, so that, that was my first instance of uh, knowing that music was going to be my friend. Um, I'm also somebody that grew up uh, with Mr. Rogers and I depended on his friendship all the time watching him. And I memorized every single song from every episode. I could still probably sing any of them to you. And so it, I think it was a mix of all of those. I was looking so desperately for something outside of my house and, and music was what I found. Well, you know, I, I can relate to that. I have spoken, I, 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 you know, I grew up in a household as well as, here you go. You look what you did. This is what you do, Tom. You <laughs> make us all just raise our hand. Tell I, me, Robert, tell me. I grew up in a home that ha was, was, I had a gambling addicted father. I had an eating disorder mother. I had a, it was very unhappy. And when I discovered music and I discovered the ability to sing, I not only used it to try to heal myself, but I thought that that would be something to give joy to others and to my family. And it was really something that for a long time I wrestled with what is my place with this? Because it it felt almost like a burden that I, I was going to have to do this. And I know that falling in love with music and art um, has really changed the, my life and given joy to people out there. Is there a that moment when you walk across the street and they say that they are waiting for you? That's fate. That's power. That's that's all of the above. Yeah. And, you know, my my definition of God is expansive. So that's my definition of God, that any time that a human being on this earth is here for you or a situation or an experience that wake it, awakens parts of your heart and your soul that you really thought were going to die. I mean, I, I literally, just like you, I, I it's a common humanity, right? Like I thought as a kid that there was no way I was going to make it through the next day. And that that piano, the moment I saw her piano and I touched the keys, and I wasn't very good in the beginning, of course, but right. it just gave me a portal that I, I, I knew something was going to be okay. And now you're going to heal all these people and you've been healing all of these people. You have a 90 minute show where you play a, almost a dozen characters. Yes. This is a show where it's just you. Yes. There's original music and yep. storytelling. Mm -hmm. This, And you are at a time where mental illness and, and, and uh, you know, being healthy and a sense of belonging and, and looking for hope are all things that we are all longing for more than ever. And Rob, you hit, you hit every word. So at a place to be, which is our music therapy center down in Virginia, it's uh, we talk often about belonging, community, belonging and hope. And I love New York. I love where you all live. And I live in a small little town outside of D.C., country, you know, horses and wineries. And I love it here. But I have to be honest. Um, and I've been here 100 times before COVID. There is a break in humanity that I see on the streets here that I knew was always here but it is worse than it has ever been. And I think the desperation of mental illness, mental health, loneliness, not belonging is um, just, it's growing every day. And um, yeah, and, and if this can be, somebody comes to see the show, this is why we're even, we have a book with resources on your way out. If you if you feel the, the show might've triggered something or you need to talk to somebody, we have resources for you. That that is gorgeous. That is so brilliant and beautiful. As a as a school teacher, um, who d works in a low income uh, neighborhood, ninety three percent economically disadvantaged, I see the loneliness and the, the the wanting to belong and feeling more isolated than ever. We are more connected, but we don't know people. We have no real. Oh no! Yep. Yeah, so, you you see it firsthand. How do you build a sense of community, Tom, when you're in the middle of New York City or you're in the middle of somewhere? How, what is, what is your advice? What's the suggestions? Where do we go? What do we do? Yeah. So I think reaching out, this is why we made the resource packet, 
reaching out is really important. And um, as I passed a couple churches, I watched families walk into the church. But there are many populations that are extremely nervous or scared to reach out. And I think that that's where we really are. We're at a place where people don't know what to do next. So, I mean, my, my advice is, you know, I have some things that I do every day, and that is I have to, like, commune with nature. I have to take a walk at least 10 or 15 minutes. A smile makes all the difference. In fact, my third day here three weeks ago, I promised myself that every, not everybody I see, but somebody is making a sandwich for me. Why not smile and, and say a real hello, not just an eye, you know, keeping your eyes down. Um, it takes you to reach outside of yourself. So I, I have the privilege and to work with many uh, clients uh, who have mental health issues, depression, anxiety. And we, we really work on what they can do to put themselves that one step beyond out there to reach to somebody. And that is not always easy because I think when you are so doused in depression and anxiety, it's hard to even hear somebody like me say that. But I think before it's too late, for us as human beings, we might not be able to walk past everybody who does not have a home or looks hungry because if you have to have those, you also have to have boundaries because the world is so toxic and beautiful and sad and, you know, uh, vibrant that you have to be able to have a nice boundary too. But it is only us that can reach out. And like I said, even if that's to somebody who looks like they have been working their butt off all day long and they could use a good, how are you doing? That's great. Thank you so much. Because I've, I've been watching people that don't even give an eye contact to people who are serving them or trying to cross the street. You just keep on running into each other. I mean, that is our world. It's not just New York. It's everywhere. And so I'm, I'm hoping at least the audiences that see my show, because a lot of us, you just named a lot of the same factors, you know, uh, uh, mental health physical health in your family, many abuse. You know, it's, it is hard. People ask me all the time, is it hard to talk about the abuse you went through with your father? Not anymore. It isn't. And, and, and how, why that is Robert is because I went through so many years of therapy to get here or I could not play my mom and my dad. And I tell people often this too, that uh, they've been gone for a long time. I've done my work because you have to work. You can't, you have to push yourself when some, well, I lost, um, in 1999, I lost 98 pounds in a year and a half. And that was forcing, putting my shoes on, forcing, buying my first pair of like running pants. And I hated every second of running, but you have to push forward. And that is, you know, something that I wish it was easier for everybody. So, so I'm hoping that people that come to see my show, see if you have had abuse, that you have had these kind of situations that somebody in your life has mental illness, it's torture for the entire family. And if I could, if, if my show starts a dialogue, if my show starts just a little bit of healing in somebody's heart as they're sitting there going, I identify with that. I know what that feels like. And validation. That, I, wow. I, uh, I say this often. I know I know why Shane wanted me to talk to you. I say this often that um, you have, as a pra I just made an appointment with my therapist for Tuesday. I I've taken a couple of months off. We started school again. I came home from vacation and all week this week, I felt like whew, it's overwhelming. It's too yeah. much. So I know that when I feel that trigger, I know where I need to go, the resources and the, the so support good. system that I have. I also lost 115 pounds. I lost 115 pounds running, walking the George Washington Bridge from New Jersey to New York. Oh I, I got divorced at 32 to, to uh, my wife, my ex-wife, and I had no idea what 
my life was going to become. I was going to have to face sexuality. I was going to have to face being alone. I was going to have to face being all by myself again. It was all so overwhelming. And I literally would just put my shoes on and walk. It became a thing where it started just because I couldn't stay in the house anymore. I had all this anxiety. Yes. And when you come from a family that has issues and you go into a marriage that has issues and then all of it kind of falls apart, you are left with not knowing what to do. It has taken me years of therapy and, and, and different things to get to a point where I can have a conversation with you. I could talk about my life on stage and, and in a show. I could make fun of and joyfully make fun of family, et cetera. But those, de- Tom, those demons come back. They, they, even with the work, they, they sw- oh, have okay. a beautiful partner. Amazing. There are days where I will automatically, the fear of the past, the, the, the abandonment issues, I, you know, how do, how do you stay, do you, do you constantly tune up and brush up and make sure you're in good mental health? Well, f- well first, I can't wait to meet you outside of this recording because it's almost like even down to the 32 year old married, everything, uh, we are actually same age, same thing. Uh, I still deal with everything. And I think that that is the secret that you just let out of yourself and I'm letting out right now, just because we're functionally, we're functional, we're seeing the light. We both have great partners. We see the light. I'm I'm on off Broadway. At least 50 times a day, I have thoughts in my head that are very disparaging. I mean, like just dark or, and and, uh, because of therapy and because of work on myself, they might last for five seconds, 10 seconds. If I, if I allow my loop that, that looping to go and I might look like, Oh, Tom has it all together and look what he does here and there. But in the back of my head, I'm thinking that imposter imposter syndrome. I mean, it's, it's a constant. And I think for those souls like us that are sensitive and in constant healing i'm glad to be that as vulnerable as it is i rather feel because i also am passing hundreds and hundreds of people a day that i don't think are feeling much and even though you and i might have to keep on making sure that we stop the tape in our head that we go back to our therapist when we need we have to tell ourselves that we are okay and we're good people, at least we're feeling. And that's what this whole show is, Robert. This this whole show is people always ask, because when you see it, you'll see it's pretty intense. And the ending, I hope, is very beautiful. They, What do I do? I do a lot of um, not your normal meditating. I do walking. I walk. I meditate. I art. I paint. I just started painting two years ago. I'm not even, I don't know if I'm like half decent painter, but I paint and I, I forget. And for me, for this brain to forget my past, for this brain to forget what I think I did wrong to other people or what I could have done better, it just never stopped. So I have to do things, exercise, sweat, paint, smell flowers, (laughs) talk to somebody you love. Tom, I get, I really get you. I, I, people, people always say to me, why do you have 800 jobs? Why are you always doing something? I can't, I'm, I need to do, I'm intentional about the time. And I, there are moments where I can stop and I know that I'm doing, and then there are moments where I, I can't. Um, so I, I, I think it's been years of just trying to do the best that I can and knowing when it's bad. And it is for people who don't suffer from anxiety or depression or have issues like this. It's very hard to explain it's what it's hard. It, it is, but I do think there are more of us, and I think most of them show up in the audiences. Oh, <laughs> so, I, I, I know I can say this, but so the twenty second stands for my Sunday school teacher explained to me that it takes twenty seconds for a hug really to work, that it takes twenty seconds to really hold somebody, and if you've ever taken it, twenty seconds is a long hug. Um, and I went to see Kimberly Akimbo uh, mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago, and I'm like, oh my God, so up my alley of all of the stuff we're talking about, right? 
So I'm sitting there and at intermission, these two ladies, definitely uh, from New Jersey, they told me. And at intermission, they didn't meet me. I mean, I said, hello. They said, hello. We're crying at intermission. And these two ladies asked me, um, could we ask you for a favor? And I said, sure. And they said, could we give you a hug? And I hugged them. They had no idea of my show. They don't, now they do. I think they're coming. But like, it's, we're all, and that show, Kimberly, I mean, once again, because the sincerity of somebody's story, fictional or non-fictional, she's such an amazing actress and the show is so good, but it's going into somebody's life. And then we take the pieces of humanity that remind us that we are still alive. And I know that that's what happened to these ladies and just ironically gave them a hug and said, hey, if you want to you want a 20 second hug? <laughs> um, yes. Everyone that's watching right now, just please go to 20secondsplay.com. 20secondsplay.com. It's here for a limited run at the moment. So you got to get your tickets quick and get them fast before, you know, the word is out and about. Thank you. Thank you. you. I will be there opening night and I'm super excited to be uh, in the house and I'm sure I'm going to need a 20 second hug when it's over. I, um, I'll give you 30, Robert. Thank you, Tom, because just talking to you, I'm like, oh boy, I better really have a nice, a chill day before I show up. <laughs> <laughs> before this moment, your art and artistry, the 300 families that are served in Northern Virginia by your organization, they are so lucky. I hope that Northern Virginia knows how lucky they are to have you there and your organization there and uh, New York City. I hope you know how lucky you are to be able to see Tom here. We need work and art like this. And I want to shout out to your, the producer team, the people that have found the show and invested money in the show, because we need more original works out here. We yeah. need these stories. And Robert, thank you so much for saying that because we're doing something a little bit different. You know, this is all going through a not like our nonprofit is holding this. So all those producers actually, do you know, they're all in this. They they don't get they get their poster, they get their 20 second hug and a good seat because they gave a donation. And so that is this is uncommon for this kind of work. So that's so thank you for saying thank you to all of them out there. That's because they feel like the cause and the mission and, and what you're doing up on that stage every single uh, night is worth it. What are you going to do to protect your heart and your, you know, 90 minutes of, of this? What is your, what do you do? You told us you're going to walk and, and smell the mm -hmm. flowers, but do you have a routine? Do you have a wind down routine after the show? Yeah. So I, I started, you know, you know how you're always told like do Epsom salts? Yes. So I've always lied and said that like I did it. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I did it. Like that does help. Uh, um, you know, uh, hot tea is great for me. Um, I'm a big movie person, sometimes watching Schitt's Creek for me, like for a half hour and maybe a half, half a glass of wine with a lot of water, you know, those things. I'm very lucky too. I have an amazing husband and he's funny as hell. And as long as I get to spend some time with him and, you know, that, but I do spend, I do not like to be with anybody before or after the show for 10 minutes. Uh, after I will go out and hug everybody, hug everybody. And then I have to have 10 to 15 minutes to decompress. And to be really honest with you, I talk to my parents still. They've been gone. My mom has been gone almost 30 years and I have full conversations. They have given me complete permission because wherever they are, they are looking down at us right now with everybody else going, whatever you can do to help Tom. Just yes. if, our, if our story is humans here, give anybody anything out there, some some tools or some love, do it. Well, so. I, I I read a book. I mean, like like her. I, I read a book by Jan Van Zandt. It's called Peace from Broken Pieces. Oh, yeah. P-E-A-C-E -E from Broken P-I-E-C-E-S. And it was the first time where I really realized that all those broken pieces may have may lead to peace for someone else and ultimately to me. And I know that the people that are watching you from above and 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 all of the people that are in the room with you every single uh, night when you do this show 
um, will be the better. They'll they'll leave with a piece of peace and some love and and maybe some calmness and compassion. And um, there's no better gift in the world, Tom, than to give that. So congratulations. Thank, thank you, thank you. And I love her, by the way. And thank you. There's a line in the show that uh, my Sunday school teacher tells me. Um, when you, when you are across from somebody you love that has hurt you, you have to remember they are fully human. They are just as broken and as whole as you are, and they're worthy of love. And this is interesting. When I went to the DC Fringe, do you know that that line was, they're just as broken as you are. And after a lady waited for me in the hallway, and she was from AA, and their entire AA group came to watch my show because my dad was an alcoholic as well. And she said, can I just recommend one thing? It's really amazing to be seen as broken and as whole at the same time. And I was like, oh, I, coll I collaborate. I listen. That's great. I'm going to put that in. <laughs> well, Tom, oh, God, I could talk to you for five hours. I you And I will. I'm going to take you to lunch. I'm going okay. to. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> You're here. I. I'm I'm trying to embrace the bittersweetness of life. That you know, there there are moments that are a little bitter, but there's a lot of sweetness out there too. Lots. Lots. I'm so excited to see the show. Everyone, I mean, come on. Go go make sure you check it out. 20 secondsplay.com. Get your tickets and see it now. Thank you yep. so much, Tom. Thank so you excited. For, thanks for talking to me. And I'm very honored to be talking to you. And I can't wait to see an audience out here. We can't wait to be there. I'll see you.